Hello everyone. Uh, today I want to talk about one of my latest purchases. Well, there are going to be a lot of latest purchases to film today, so strap in. Um, however, today we will talk about Amazon Dermes. This is a fragrance I smelled this summer in an airport and I loved it. Um, it's about it's about me smelling fragrances in airports and loving them and then buying them. Um, I got it um, this winter. It was on the list for quite some time and uh, for some reason it was difficult to find. I'm not sure if it's this. I don't think it's discontinued. Um, I think I, I see that it is very much available on uh, the Hermes France um, website um, however uh, there is a shortage you know um, of it for some reason um, in shops um, maybe it's just being pulled maybe it's being repackaged I do not know however this is a beautiful scent and I'm glad I got it um, Amazon when I first smelled it let me just spray it um, when I smelt it in the airport again I wanted to kick myself for not trying this, for not having tried this earlier because it is exactly in my, um, you know, ballpark um, type of sense, you know, it's my, it, it's very green and it has um, this makeup accord without it being powdery. If that makes much sense. Um, it's also quite creamy and sandalwoody. So, you know, um, then I reminded myself when I when I was when I was starting to gather my thoughts for this video, I uh, realized I could do a sort of three fragrance video, just like I did with um, Amouage Gold Man in the previous video, um, because there are two other fragrances that are sort of in the same ballpark, sort of similar, but not quite so. And they are Rive Gauche by Yves Saint Laurent, and of course, Chamad by Guerlain, and remember, when I filmed Shamad, I said I wasn't um, able to um, find this type of bottle decently priced. Well, I found it. It's very, very tiny, but we will talk about it <laughs> in just uh, in just a moment. Now, Amazon is supposed to be this, you know, in typical Hermes fashion. Let me just maybe you'll be able to see what's on the. Um, inside of the label as uh, most of their fragrances from this these ty this type of bottle they have something on the um, other side of the label and it's um, it's a woman riding a horse you know as in in typical Hermes fashion there's the horse element there's the equestrial element um, and this I think ties into you know the outdoors the energetic the um, vivacity the the joy of life the you know the modernity the um, empowerment of women of um, feeling free and unhindered and um, you know everything an Amazon should be you know stand for i am reading on the um, on their website that this was inspired by um you know the um, you know the legend of the amazons um somewhere around the shores of the black sea which is funny um i do not detect anything extremely marine about this however there is that very very green um, outdoorsy element that kind of reminds me of um, sun-kissed step which you that you might find uh, next to next to a sea um, this was done by Maurice Morin in 1974 and as you will see 
the other two fragrances although not done by the same perfumer they were done in sort of the same you know age in the same um, years more or less now let's talk a bit about the composition of Amazon and the first thing I want to talk about is the cassis or the um, you know black currant buds um, if you remember when I filmed um, the zoologist discovery set I got very very impressed by dodo because that was a bush I, I think I said it smelled like a thistle bush um, or a bush of you know black currants which um, are very violently almost green green and a bit sweaty and very very interesting now let me tell you I have sat satiated my um, lust <laughs> my lust for dodo uh, with this Amazon because it is the exact type of feeling this is very green violently almost type of black currant bush that you can it's like you're having an accident and you're driving your horse do you drive a horse no you're just riding a horse but you are driving it <laughs> sort of um, you're driving your horse accidentally through a bush of black currants and this is exactly what it smells like um, it's as I said it's an almost violent experience and it does awaken the senses It's a very beautiful way to start a fragrance and let me tell you that this cassis or this black currant green um, smell does sort of run through most of the fragrance up until almost the very end there when it becomes um, sort of muskier and um, the human or the you know animalic element kind of takes over it's also um, I should note that it's also got the elements of you know maybe perspiration maybe somebody's that that's been doing some effort you know um, a sporty an active person um, which is quite similar to Odermes uh, in that regard which I find very beautiful um, it's not overpowering it's not something that's you know center stage but it is there um, if you know how to look for it and I do look for such interesting little tea tidbits and in, um, in fragrances I think it humanizes them and I think it makes them very very easy to wear um, now in general this is you know it's a floral scent now that's that's for sure it's a floral scent and and all of them are as you will see and I think the most um, overt element to Amazon is besides the casses which is you know quite strong um, is the spring flowers which again are very delicate flowers um, not overpowering they're there um, but they are very delicate and again they're the sort of very energetic type of florals um, and spring florals I think is um, something I do I do appreciate a lot more than other type of florals in scents in general and when talking about um, mainly hyacinth and narcissus but when it comes to Amazon we're talking mainly about narcissus because this fragrance as it progresses the cassis kind of is being taken over by another green delicate scent which is you know daffodil narcissus and it does remind me of it reminds me of Jeffrey Bean's gray flannel that's why it remind it, it's got the same sort of elements um, of Jeffrey Bean including violet slash iris it is perfection I think this is why it reminded me of that um, sort of makeup 
ish accord without it being too powdery everything is very fresh everything is green everything is tonic and liberating and i just i just love it there's also very very slight fruity elements to this um a very slight you know um berry a tart berry element a bit bitter maybe because of the you know black currant i think black currant um that black currant bud also has some floral elements to it maybe um it's not terribly oak mossy this one although you can definitely detect a, a dose a generous dose of galbanum which you know of course makes it even more green um but it kind of settles into this creamy elang slash sandalwood which 20 years i think into the future will turn into samsara which is amazing if you if you ask me now this is something i could say for the other two fragrances just as much um regarding the sandalwood because i think the florals and the sandalwood is what ties them all together now because i already spoke about shemad i will talk about rive gauche first um because i i've never i've never spoken about rive gauche um until now now this is also a, um, a rather new purchase for me um when i got another bottle of shalimar i got it from another person uh, i got it second hand shalimar i also got this partial of rive gauche i think it's along this level right here it's not got it's a 50 milliliter bottle it's a beautiful beautiful um i think postmodern bottle type of design um so i got it just for you know for testing but i'm loving this and this um this fragrance was done um sort of in the same um you know period of time it was done let me search because i forgot it was done in 1970 i'm with all as always my fragrantica is right in front of me helps me not helps me not to forget things uh and it was done by michelle e now if that's the way you pronounce that perfumer's name <laughs> i'm sorry if that's not the one now this is a floral old headache well you could say you could say amazon is old the headache as well um but this one is more overtly old the headache it's fruity floral aldehydes and they are a very very gentle and well you know the entirety of the fragrance i find to be quite gentle and quite uh you know all of them are very well paced very well balanced um very very well crafted fragrance as i should say um and this one is sweetish floral fruity it's got this beautiful um almost peach like old headache thing um which again it makes it very joyous very uh, it's a very happy scent um rive gauche um it's also the florals tend to be a bit deeper and a bit more textured than in amazon it's a lot more um where amazon is green and energetic and sporty um rive gauche tends to be you know um i think the florals do take center stage in this and you know it's a bit more oak mossy and it's got that vintage um not vintage sorry it's got that shipra um sort of direction a lot more than amazon does um but i think and this is also muskier 
you know, it's muskier and um, it's got that pissy element which I do love in fragrances. It's got that pissy element. It's that tart um, that again, it reminds me of a future Samsara because I smell something pissy in Samsara as well. I think it's the combination between Ilang and Sandalwood, which is also very present here as well. And again, all three fragrances, I think they stem from the floral, all the Hittic fragrances of yore, you know, as um, Chanel number no. five, you know, that was a huge inspiration on the fragrance world. And it's very um, understandable. And it does, all of them have that sort of Chanel vibe to it, you know, the sandalwoody base, um, which I find to be, you know, very posh as well very interesting and very posh, uh, very luxurious. Um, but it's also, you know, it's warm and easy to wear and comfortable and uh, creamy and beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Also, Rive Gauche has this um, nutty base, nuttier, I should say, base. Um, that kind of reminds me just a bit of Amarige and even further it reminds me of uh, Guerlain's future Samsara. This is this is beautiful at, in terms of you know progression of um, the way scents are composed and the way trends are evolving you know from um, floral old hittics to just pure sandalwood, ambery, floral, nutty floral, which is samsara, which is gorgeous. I should have added samsara in here, but this is from just another period, you know. Um, samsara is from early 90s. Okay, now, Rive Gauche. Um, you, you know a thing or two about the Rive Gauche. I don't have to tell you the, the name, you know, it's called Rive Gauche from the left bank of the Seine where all the Bohemian um, things were going on. Well, most of the Bohemian, because Paris is Paris, left bank or right bank, who cares? Um, but you know, it's where um, Yves Saint Laurent had their headquarters, so you know, left bank of the Seine, the Bohemians, and I do, I do have to say, I love this bottle. It's a shame about the male counterpart that's you know discontinued. Uh, I think this one is still in production. I think you can still find it, and it is extremely powerful. Um, it is very long lasting, and it's not that type of over bearing scent that you know clouds the judgment and all that now let's talk about shamad because I, I i actually secretly did want to um search for um you know um an excuse to film me this shamad again to uh, maybe show you this beautiful seven seven milliliter bottle which is ah oh, it's so small and these type of bottles they do have um they are very prone to breaking all of them are but at the top you know this um the mouth of the bottle is very prone to breaking and i am always very very careful not to you know have an an expensive accident that would make me very very sad indeed because as again with kalesh um this isn't a fragrance I would be able to wear. This is just a fragrance I will, you know, keep for the bottle. This is very beautiful. Oh my goodness. Oh my, the x-ray is, you know, it's it's very beautiful. I did speak of um, Chamad de Gaglan uh, on, a, on another video. This is green. A very very green sandalwoody again very much sandalwoody but also balmy um, a lot of galbanum in this but it's the sort of galbanum that doesn't make it green 
like in the eau de toilette, which is green almost as Voldeny is green. This is balmy and syrupy and agglutinated towards the base, you know, it's the X-ray. Um, and it's resinous and it's just, you know, everything is um, more towards the heavier parts of the, um, of the fragrance. However, if I really wanted to do a comparison between the three, I should have mentioned the Eau de Toilette uh, because all of them, all of them are Eau de Toilette. So let's be fair. Let's be fair to the other two. Now the Eau de Toilette is spring floral, hyacinth heavy. I'm still going to use this for inspiration. Um, and you know, it's got that old Hittic um, journey, you know, from start to finish, well, where the old highs kind of tone down and the florals kind of take over and then towards the um, base in typical Guerlain fashion you've got hints of vanilla and amber which is you know it's spectacular. Shamad is a very it's criminally underrated as a scent um, and in this x-ray form once again I have to say this is the clearest precursor to samsara if there ever was one including you know um including the jasmine and including the you know the those parts of the gerlina the the jasmine the rose um but funnily enough it's it's also nutty as samsara tends to become um but funnily enough there isn't it doesn't have those pissy elements now the current x-ray because i've smelled the current x-ray as well the current x-ray is a lot heavier on the um, cassis it's very very similar to amazon the current x-ray which is green again very energetic green and um very lively very happy this is some this older shamad because i don't know where it's it, it's very difficult to pinpoint these type of bottles uh i don't think it's a very old bottle but it's still you know older because th these type of bottles aren't produced anymore um this type of scent is um you know more somber you know it's a bit more because mostly because most vintages well i should say all vintages indeed have lost the top notes you know it's this is why and they are matured scents they have been um you know sitting in this bottle for god knows how many years the top notes will have been you know um gone actually and you have to be aware of this when purchasing vintage and it's also something very unfair to do when judging a vintage to the current formulation because they these ones are matured and they have no top notes so when you smell the current formulation where the top notes are just so sparkling and fresh and beautiful um, you tend to say well it's been diluted no it no it hasn't been it hasn't been diluted it's just you know your fragrance is older and it's been oxidated and that's that now um, what a beautiful trinity of fragrances i have spoken about today if i had to choose one believe it or not amazon is my favorite i think it suits me the most um i think it's the most easier um the most the easiest for me to wear and to pull off as a man why not uh, i think rive gauche is a bit too textured into the white florals i'm still going to wear it um but you know day to day what what my heart's really drawn to would be Amazon by Hermes no question about that and just to admire the craftsmanship of Shamad as always um, okay so if you've got any other questions about any of the fragrances I've spoken about today do let me know in the comments below 
And until next time, remember fragrance creates memories and may yours be happy.